All right, guys, in this video, we're going to be learning how to draw some resonance structures. And I have a few examples here, including uh, this first one that looks a little bit complicated. And I got a couple of other examples here and there. So we'll go over those one by one. Let's start with this very first example. So you can clearly see I got two nitro grips on the benzene ring. And remember, the nitro grips sometimes are going to be written as NO2. So you want to make sure you can break it down to NO2, or you can go ahead and write down the Lewis star structures of those NO2 groups when you're doing the resonance forms. And we have this uh, lone pair of electrons or the negative charge on this benzylic position. So it's like a um, lone pair that's going to be moving into the ring. So the first structure where we're going to be drawing the arrows. So actually, before I do that, I'm going to make a couple of copies of this structure so that I don't have to redraw that every time. So it's just three, maybe three or four of those, depending on how many we need. And um, in the first case, I would have this lone pair going in there to create a double bond. And in doing so, the pi bond from here is going to break up to, to create the electron density on this particular carbon. So when I go back, let me erase this part right there. Let me erase that here. I'm going to have a new double bond right there. And in addition to that, there is going to be a lone pair right here. So we are still restoring the negative charge of O minus 1 as an overall in the molecule. And that's what you want to make sure that you have it restored every time you go from one resonance structure to another resonance structure. Now, for the second one, what could possibly happen? I got this lone pair right there and uh, that double bond are conjugated with one another so I can go ahead and draw a double bond right there and then in that case this pi bond is going to break and it's going to create the lone pair on that particular carbon so let me just uh, raise a part of it so remember we already had a double bond outside the ring like this so keep that over there now we're creating the new double bond that's going to be at this location right there and we're going to have a negative charge uh, so we're just going to draw a negative charge right there on that particular carbon now once it gets to that carbon it actually have two possible ways for this electron to flow we can uh, keep it moving along the ring or we can also have this coming outside onto the nitro group because this particular lone pair and this double bond that's between the nitrogen and oxygen are in conjugation with one another so that's why there are going to be two different possibilities so what I can do I can have this lone pair going in there to create the double bond and in doing so the pi bond between the nitrogen and oxygen is going to break and create the lone pair, extra lone pair on that oxygen atom. So that's why I had that extra resonance structure here. So let's go back and uh, move this one a little bit down here. So let me raise a part of it. So that, that, and that. I'm also going to raise this. So remember, we already had the double bond right there, so keep that as it is. And then we have a double bond right there. So now the new double bond that's going to be created, that's going to be between the carbon and nitrogen. So go ahead and create a double bond right there. Oops. Create a double bond right there. And then in doing so, there is going to be extra lone pair on that right oxygen, and that's going to get a negative charge. So you're still restoring the formal charge of minus 1 overall in this molecule. Now, like I said, this lone pair that was on this resonance, previous resonance structure that could also go along into the ring as well. So that's going to be another resonance structure. So I can have this lone pair right there going into the ring. So I'm just make sure I draw that correctly. So we're going to be starting from right here, going into the ring, and that pi bond is going to break, and that pi bond is going to be creating the electron density on that particular carbon. So let me just go ahead and erase a part of it. So remember there was a double bond right there. You leave that there. You had a double bond here. Now you're going to be creating a new double bond that's going to be right here. 
between that carbon that's adjacent to the nitrogen and uh, the carbon on the left. And then we get a negative charge on that particular carbon there. And then when this goes back, and this uh, pi bond is going to break between the car two carbons that's outside the ring, and the electron density is going to be restored back onto the carbon that's outside the ring. So that will actually take you back to the first resonance structure you have in there. So that's going to be your overall five, six resonance structures. Now you may wonder why in the world I have two nitro groups in there. And the reason is the location of the nitro group actually matters when you're drawing the resonance structures. You, it, you may have the nitro groups, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be always involved in the resonance. So you can clearly see I had two, res, uh, two nitro groups, one at uh, the para position there, and the other one was at this meta position, you can say. Um, the one at the meta position, or this, the one in blue circle, didn't really play an important role or didn't get involved in the resonances because the negative charge never got onto this particular carbon. So since the negative charge never got onto that particular carbon, it never had the potential to go into the nitro group. However, when you looked at the other nitro group that's in orange circle here, that had the negative charge right next to, the, uh, the carbon right next to that nitro group had the negative charge, and as a result, the electron flowed into the nitro group as well. So that's why sometimes you gotta make sure which particular nitro group is gonna be getting the resonance structures or we're gonna be getting the electrons flow into it. Let's look at this next one here. Well, on this one, we clearly have a positive charge outside the ring. So how the structure, the resonance structures in the air is gonna be different when I'm comparing to the top one. Now in the previous one, we have the electrons flowing into the ring because you have an excessive electrons on that particular carbon. Now this carbon is actually an electron deficient, so you can't really start your arrow from the positive charge. As a result, you're gonna be starting from the pi bond. Now your pi bond is actually inside the ring. So what I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be drawing it something like this. And then I'll have the first structure. So let me draw that. So you're gonna have a double bond now outside the ring and then the other double bond stays as it is and you get a positive charge right there and then you're just gonna wanna go ahead and keep doing it and now in the next setup you can have this uh, pi bond move into to create the double bond there still got uh, a double bond outside the ring and you have a new position of the double bond. Let me choose a different color here. So that's where you can have a new double bond, get a positive charge right there. And uh, keep in mind, you still have the double bond right on that left position. Now you can have this double bond on the left position moving into to create a new double bond, new pi bond right there. And in doing so, your resonance will look like this. Still got uh, a double bond outside I had a double bond on the right side, created the new double bond. Maybe I can change the color here again. So that's gonna be right there. And then we're gonna have a positive charge right there. So when this moves again, where this is gonna be in at the lytic position, positive charge with respect to that double bond. So when that double pi bond moves in to create the next resonance structure, it actually falls back to the first one. So this is how you're gonna be drawing the resonances of a benzylic carbocation. So you can clearly see what's the difference gonna be when you have a negative charge and when you have the positive charge. Well, let's look at this next one here. We have uh, two carbonyl groups, or you can say two ketones, and then they're in between those two ketones, there is a lone pair of electrons. So we can clearly see that this lone pair is gonna be allylic with respect to both of those uh, pi bonds and what we're gonna have to do we can have this moving into both of those sides so I can have this move down here in that case this is gonna come out and uh, create an extra lone pair on that oxygen so when you do so 
we're going to be creating a new set of lone uh, resonance structure where the carbon and oxygen is going to be a single bond now and there is going to be a double bond right here and the other carbonyl stays untouched that's one possibility well someone may wonder why not move it onto the left side and uh, you can clearly move that onto the left side as well and when you suppose do move that on the left side this is how it's going to look like so you go in to create the double bond onto the left side between the two carbons and the pi bond is going to break to create a extra lone pair on that oxygen and I think I did forget to put a negative charge on that oxygen in the previous structure because remember your charge must be conserved or a net charge must be conserved going from one resonance to another resonance Okay, so we're going to have a single bond between the carbon and oxygen now that's going to be on the left side. That oxygen is going to have three lone pairs with a negative charge. There is going to be a double bond right there. And the carbonyl that's on the right side stays as it is. So that's going to be your other resonance structure in this particular case. What about this next one? It's probably going to be a good idea if you can pause the session and maybe do this on your own. Well, we got a lone pair on the nitrogen, and the lone pair on the nitrogen and this double bond, they are actually allylic with respect to one another. So I can go ahead, let me just copy this down so that I don't have to draw it multiple times. I'll just manipulate it as we go. I can have the lone pair moving in to create this double bond between the nitrogen and the carbon. And in doing so, the pi bond is going to break. And when that pi bond breaks, it's going to re uh, create an uh, electron pair onto that next carbon. So your structure, let me erase part of it, would look like this. So you, now you have a double bond between the carbon and, the carbon and the nitrogen, where c nitrogen having four bonds now will have a positive charge. And then there is going to be an electron density on that carbon on the right side. So that's your one resonance structure. Now you can clearly see that this lone pair that you just created and the pi bond that's between the carbon and oxygen are now in conjugation or with one another. And as a result, we can move this lone pair into the new position that's going to be between the two carbons. And in doing so, the pi bond is going to break between the carbon and oxygen to create the electron density on the oxygen. So let me erase a part of that. So we're going to have, obviously we had a double bond there between the carbon and nitrogen, so keep that there. And then you're creating a new double bond that's going to be between the two carbons, the carbon adjacent to the oxygen. And now all of a sudden, oxygen is going to have an extra lone pair with a negative charge. So as in a start out, when we started out, the first structure didn't have a charge on the molecule. So the net charge was zero. And when we look at the second structure, we got, uh, let me change the color, we got uh, two atoms with the charges. We got the nitrogen with a positive charge and carbon with a negative charge. So your net charge is still going to be zero. And the same can be said about the third structure, third resonance structure where we have the negative charge on the oxygen and the positive charge on the nitrogen. And even in that case, the, your net charge stays the zero. Make sure your net charge stays the same among the resonance structure. It may distribute among different elements, but when you add up all the formal charges, the net charge will be the same among different resonance structures. Hopefully this was helpful, and if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.